friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my October setup in my bullet journal. For this setup, I am using the stickers that I made for my patrons for this month. I'm going for a very gothic Lolita theme. I also recently got the Halloween box from Archer and Olive and it contains so many cool things and especially this a notepad with dots, grid paper in different colors. I really love this and the colors fit perfectly with my October setup or at least what I had in mind for my October setup. I also recently made a little purchase from the washi tape shop and this black rose pet tape is one of them because I knew that it would be perfect for this setup. So gothic lolita, crows, black cats and roses that's what we're going for and also can we get a little commotion for the nails because i absolutely love this set i think that they look so witchy and magical really pretty like i said this theme is very much gothic lolita but i also took some elements from kind of classic gothic art for example i wanted to create this frame around my cover page and that is definitely inspired by some gothic frames that i saw online to do my line art i used my ohuhu fine liners and also some tombow mono drawing pens i have a lot of different fine liners and i usually just mix and match depending on the size that i need and um, yeah, it, it usually turns out great. Regardless of the brand, I find that fine liners are pretty consistent across the board. And uh, the reason why I chose to use the Ohuhu ones this time was because I have all the sizes. So for the frame, I used the size one, which is the thickest one, because this way I could make a very thick border around the whole page. Kind of frame it and then i just drew a little bit of these like gothic inspired ornaments kind of in the corners this was an exercise in precision getting all of these swirly lines correct in each corner because you have to mirror the design and honestly like on the cover page it was fine but i did make a mistake on a separate page where i was trying to do the same thing but it worked out fine i just took care to pencil out the design before going over it with a thin fine liner and then I filled in the corner designs afterwards. So this way I felt like I had a little bit more control on the shape of the ornaments than I would have had if I used a thicker fine liner to like color in the whole thing right away, if that makes sense. I wanted to create a very detailed and impactful cover page for this gothic theme because I think that, you know, gothic art is usually very detailed and I wanted to do that in my journal as well. So the frame was kind of just the beginning of it. The font that I used is also very gothic and elaborate, very like classic calligraphy, although I did it fake calligraphy i'm not i can't do real calligraphy like that but um you know i did my best for my drawing i started with a 0.1 fine liner i find that this is a very good size for smaller pieces like this although it takes up most of the cover page the drawing itself is very small because my notebook is very small. It is a traveler's notebook size, notebook from Notebook Therapy. And I mean, you can see it in relation to my hand. My hand is almost as long as the notebook is tall. And so <laughs> there isn't room for it that much in here, but somehow I managed to fit a lot of stuff in my spreads every time, regardless. <laughs> I draw a lot digitally and it's, you know, such a blessing to be able to erase strokes and try again when something goes wrong. Obviously drawing by hand traditionally like this on paper is a lot less forgiving. And so I felt like I really had to concentrate a lot of the time to make sure that I got the lines correct. My sketch was pretty thorough, but not super thorough. Like I could have definitely made it cleaner but to be completely honest i didn't have the patience and i figured you know it will turn out how it will turn out a little mistake here and there you know it will be fine and so i cut myself a lot of slack with this drawing and you know i think that the end result turned out pretty good so maybe that is the way to go <laughs> I definitely could have spent less effort on the hair because I was just going to color it black anyway. So all of these little lines that I drew for the hair, which is what I normally do to give it more life and more dimension. 
uh, was kind of unnecessary because, yeah, like I said, I colored it black in the end. For my October title, I found this gothic font online and I tried to copy it as best as I could. It's of course not super easy to do this, especially when it's a type of font that you're a little bit unfamiliar with. This is the type of font that you would use a calligraphy pen to do. I have calligraphy pens actually from Ohuhu as well, but I've never been able to master it and I figured this would look just as nice. I mean, this would look nicer than if I were to try actual calligraphy with a calligraphy pen because that would have been a disaster. <laughs> I really like the ornaments on the O. I think it looks really pretty. And overall, I think that the title turned out fine. Although the main colors in this whole setup is black, like I use a lot of black, I wanted to have an accent color just to make things a little bit more interesting, I guess. And normally with October, you choose orange because of pumpkins, right? So orange and black is a very classic October color scheme, but I went with pink. <laughs> I just thought that, you know, it would look really nice with like pink roses and black roses together and just a little bit different than the classic orange and black. Also red and black is pretty common, I would say. So I went with a pink and I think that it actually turned out really nice. I tried to match this marker with the pink that I used in my stickers that I made for my patrons. This is a marker from Ohuhu. It's a water-based dual tipped marker and it has a very very thin fine liner on the other end so with that i was able to kind of outline the pink parts because i didn't want the pink to go all the way to the lines of my drawing i wanted to have a tiny little white gap in between my drawing and the pink circle that is kind of just a way for me to make the drawing stand out a little bit more. And this is a trick that I use a lot in my digital art, but then obviously it's easy to add the white line afterwards, but you can't do that with a traditional drawing. I mean, you can, but then it's gonna cover up the line art and it's just gonna be a mess. <laughs> So it's easier to just not color in the background all the way to the line art of the drawing. For the black hair, I initially started with a black brush pen from Ohuhu, but then I actually switched to the Ohuhu fine liners, but they have like a brush version. So it's like a very thin and soft brush. And I decided to use that instead because it would be the same color as the as the line art, but I actually regretted this later because the black brush pen, like the dual tipped brush pen, is slightly blacker once it dries. And I noticed this actually the day after I filmed this, I was looking at the spread and I was like, huh, that part of the hair that I colored with the brush pen is actually a little bit more black than the parts of the hair that I colored with the fine liner brush. So that's interesting. For the dress, I went with a very dark gray because I just wanted to have a little bit more dimension in the drawing. And it's hard coloring everything in with black because you're erasing <laughs> the line art. So <laughs> I figured it would be better to use a, a gray brush pen. It did get a little bit streaky, but it's not the end of the world, really. I colored in the crow with the same dark gray brush pen, and I also drew some feathers that would kind of be blowing in the wind just to add something to that part of the spread. And then I did some detail, some shading. The blouse could have been wider. It is a little bit more yellow than I intended, but you know, that's fine. I added some details with a white gel pen. This one is also from Ohuhu. I really like this one. It's very opaque and I think that it adds a lot more dimension to the drawing and it makes it look a lot more interesting. Now for the really fun part, in my opinion. <laughs> I got this black rose pet tape from the washi tape shop. I do have an affiliate code with the washi tape shop where you get 10% off, so that is in the description box. I used my cutting mat and my X-Acto knife to cut out the designs and then that way I can just peel them off of the tape roll. You can also cut them with scissors, but then you have to like peel, I don't know, it's, it's just a little bit more of a hassle, I think. <laughs> 
So I just put them on to the page and then I used my X-Acto knife to cut around the frame so that all the roses would be kind of behind the frame and not cover up the frame. Pet tape is really great because it sticks really well to the page but it is also really easy to peel off. So I found that I had no problems with this. I didn't damage the paper or anything. And as long as you use a very sharp blade and not so much pressure, you're not gonna cut the paper underneath. This pet tape has some really pretty like rose gold details, which I also think adds to the overall appearance. I'm actually so happy with how it turned out. It really fits what I had envisioned in my head. <laughs> so now we can move on to the next spread of my setup, which will be my calendar for October. A bit different from my calendar spreads earlier this year, but this spread is going to have just a calendar, <laughs> so nothing more. I used the notepad from Archer and Olive here. They were so kind and sent me a bunch of their Halloween stuff, their Halloween box, and also some of their other stuff from their Halloween collection this year, and I haven't been able to use much Archer and Olive products in the past few years because their shipping to Europe is extortionate. Is that a word? Extortionate <laughs> at best. <laughs> I really like their products. I think that they always release high quality stuff, but yeah, paying like $200 in shipping for a $100 order is just insane, it, really insane. So as far as I know, there's only one stockist in Norway for Archer and Olive and they don't take in everything from Archer and Olive, understandably. So getting your hands on Archer and Olive products as a Norwegian is not that easy. So when they reached out and asked me if I wanted some of their Halloween stuff, I immediately said yes, because I really wanted a chance to see how their notebooks are now because the last time I got one of their notebooks was many many years ago and I know that they have changed things since then especially with the spine and everything so I really wanted to see how they were different now. I have a reel over on my Instagram where I unbox all of the stuff that they sent me so check that out if you're interested. It was perfect for my October theme since I'm going for a very classic Halloween-y theme. I just really like spooky season and horror books and horror movies and yeah, it's just, it's, it's a fun time for me. <laughs> I think I will use more of the stuff that they sent me in my weekly spreads for now in this monthly setup I'm mostly using the notepad but they also sent me washi tape and stickers and stuff like that so yeah, I want to use more of that. Anyway, for my calendar, I took a lot of inspiration from my friend Usagi on Instagram. Usagi X Pion is her username. She made this really cool August theme. Her calendar was pretty similar to what I'm doing here with a kind of black border and then a white calendar. I did mess up cutting the black paper, that's why I had to like glue a little extra section on one page. <laughs> For the black paper, I of course used the notepad from Archer and Olive. It already has dots, so it's very easy to measure. And then for my white paper, I could have used white dot grid paper, but I decided to use this grid paper from Muji because it has a smaller grid and I really like that. It's 0.25 centimeter grid, so a 25 millimeter grid, and most dot grid journals are 0.5 centimeter grid. And that's nice and all, but I actually prefer a smaller grid, like 0.3 or 0.35 is perfect for me. <laughs> One thing that I completely forgot was to write Monday through Sunday on this calendar, which is really silly because that's kind of what the top part of the black border was for. <laughs> that was my intention. Um, but as I am recording this, I'm looking over at my journal and I still haven't put it in there. So um, odd choice. I guess I got a little bit overwhelmed with everything that was going on and my friend was calling me during this and yeah, just a lot going on. <laughs> Anyway, the rest of the spread I decorated with more black roses. Honestly, decorating spreads with this type of pet tape that you can just layer on top of each other because it is clear, it's such an easy way to decorate a spread and make it look really detailed when it's actually so simple. 
so yeah i really really enjoyed this and the end result is so intricate and pretty so definitely can recommend i used a very similar strategy i guess <laughs> for my reading journal and some of my yearly spreads with different floral pet tapes and it's such a great way to to give a spread a lot of details very quickly and very easily so love pet tapes like this nowadays there are so many different kinds as well so endless possibilities <laughs> You know, I say that it's a quick way to decorate, but this whole setup actually took me over six hours to make, with breaks included, of course, because there's no way I can just sit at my desk and churn out a, a setup like this for six hours without breaks. <laughs> my friend called me during this and we had a chat and I took a lunch break in between. It just took a lot longer than I anticipated it would. I think it's because of all of the drawing because when I make collage setups it usually is a lot quicker but obviously drawing stuff is going to take longer than just gluing in some pieces of paper and washi tape and stickers, you know? For my October header I decided to bring in a little bit of color because so far it was mostly black and white on the spread so I used the notepad again from Artron Olive and I used the burgundy paper. It is also dot grid so it was fairly easy for me to draw or <laughs> write my October header. I used the same font as before. I was kind of just winging it without sketching much uh, here, so I was very proud afterwards. I decided to rip it first to see how that would look. Again, I was taking some inspiration from Usagi and her spreads from August, but in the end I didn't quite like how it looked, so I used scissors to cut out the title instead, and then I layered it with some of the same grid paper that I used for the calendar. And this was the extent of the collage on this spread, I think. I just wanted something white in the background to cover up a little bit of the roses because it would make the October header more visible, but I didn't want too much stuff going on. So yeah, that's what I did. I had to cut everything in two because I don't like gluing stuff across the spread because usually the glue will like not sit as well because the notebook is getting opened and closed all the time. So I prefer to just cut things in half and then glue each piece onto each page. And that way there is a little bit of a gap in the middle, but it's not that noticeable. And honestly, I think that it, it, it looks fine. I also used some of my stickers, this cat sticker and the girl sticker. The cat is completely black and that's because I drew the sticker sheet before I knew that Margot would be in my life. And so the printables that I made for my patrons this month is all tuxedo cats because that's Margot. <laughs> Moving on to the next spread, this one will be my habit tracker and you might notice that this is a bit unusual for me but it's taking up the entire spread. I will usually put the habit trackers on just one page of a spread because I don't need that many but now being a cat mom, soon to be cat grandma I guess, <laughs> I, I have a lot more things that I want to track for the health of the cat and the kittens and so some of these habits are for me and some of them are for the cats. So I started by making the same frame as I did on the cover page. I like to include details like this in my monthly setups to kind of bind the spreads together because obviously every spread is different and I like to use the same decoration just to make it feel more cohesive. So same frame and then of course the same font to write habit tracker, fairly large on top of the spread. Uh, I think that it needed to be fairly large and like cover the entire top of the spread because there's a lot of little calendars on the spread, like it's pretty full in the end. <laughs> For my little habit trackers, I cut out these rectangles from the black dot grid paper from the Archer and Olive notepad and then I used 
the grid paper from Muji again for the actual calendars. This way I'm bringing in the elements from the calendar spread as well into this habit tracker. So I made room for eight of these little calendars and then I also made two little calendars at the bottom which are a little bit different and those are for some other cat things that I might need to track like how many times a day something happens. And so that's why I made them a little bit different. I also think that this looks quite nice because it changes things up a little bit. I made the calendars the same way I did the monthly calendar so that there is room on top to write the habit that I'm tracking and I'm just using a white gel pen to write that because it will show up really well on the black paper. My favorite white gel pen is from Ohuhu. I also like the jelly roll gel pens, but the ones from Ohuhu are actually slightly better in my opinion. I used a 0.2 fine liner to draw out the calendar grids because the grid on this Muji paper is very, very faint. And because it is a 0.25 grid and not a 0.5 grid, I figured, you know, it's nice to have the, the grid all laid out. And then I can just cross out or color in the days when I do that habit. I don't know if you guys use habit trackers. I make them every month. Well, recently I've been making them every month. I don't always keep track throughout the entire month, but I do my best. It is a work in progress. <laughs> and I think that it's okay to make spreads in your journal with the intention of using them. And then, you know, life happens. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it's perfect and exactly what you needed. So I don't feel bad if I end up not using a spread. I usually go into each month with, with a very optimistic mindset though. <laughs> and uh, this month is no different. I'm going to have very tiny kittens in October. It's going to be a crazy month because I'm going to be packing the advent calendars. I need to have my friends over to help me because it's such a big job. But there are also going to be at least four kittens running around and oh, they're gonna love the boxes for the advent calendars, I'm sure. <laughs> I will do my absolute best to avoid cat hair in your orders though. <laughs> but speaking of the advent calendars, I still have a few left on my website, so you can still purchase one, pre-order one, obviously, because I'm not sending them out just yet. I'm still waiting for some of the products from my manufacturer. I am so excited for all of the products. I'm so excited to see it all together and for you guys to get them in the mail. So definitely pre-order to be able to get it as quickly as possible. I've put a link to the advent calendars in the description box below. I wanted to add a little bit of decoration to the spread, so I added a little bit of roses to the bottom, and then I just used my X-Acto knife to make it so that they appear to be kind of behind the little tracker and behind the frame again. And I think that this is a really nice little detail. So it's it's pretty subtle and it's nice that it appears to be behind everything. I really like that look. I also used one of my own crow stickers to the top because the habit tracker, like I put one word on each page, but there was a little bit of room in the top left corner. So I added a crow there just, just because. <laughs> And that is it for the spread. We can move on to the fourth and final spread that I'll be making in this video. This is not a planning spread. This is purely for fun because in October I have this tradition of reading horror books and also watching horror movies. I don't think that this is very unique. I think lots of people do this, <laughs> but I decided to make a little spread in my journal to record these books and movies. So on the left side I'm going to have horror books and on the right side I'm going to have horror movies. And the way I'm going to do this is that I'm just going to have a little bit of decoration and then I'm going to print out the book covers and the movie posters really small so that I can uh, just decorate the spread with them. Hopefully the colors won't be too much of a clash with the colors I've chosen already. This is the frame that I kind of messed up a little bit because somehow I managed to 
not do the bottom corners the same way as the top corners. I, I made the mistake on one of them first and then I was like, well, it's a little bit weird if one out of four is wrong. So instead I should just do the bottom ones wrong and the top ones correct and then it will look intentional. <laughs> So that's what I did. <laughs> and then I wanted to use the vinyl sticker that I made for my patrons for this month. It has this pink sparkly background and I thought it would be a nice pink accent for this spread. So I just glued in a little bit of black roses kind of behind this girl. And then she's covering up most of the bottom of this little rectangle. I wrote horror books at the top. Very simple font. I didn't do the gothic one this time. To be honest, at this point I was getting really tired and I just wanted to be done. So I definitely took some shortcuts. One of them being skipping the gothic font. <laughs> I could have made the two spreads very similar or symmetrical, I guess, but I wanted to change it up a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. I know that I'm gonna read more horror books that I'm gonna watch horror movies. So I decided to make these six rectangles and then I can glue in the horror books, no, sorry, the horror movies <laughs> on the rectangles. And I used the gray dot grid paper from the Archer and Olive notepad here because I hadn't used the gray one yet. Looking at it now, I don't know, it might have looked better with black, but you know, I wanted to just try all of the pages. I used one of my book cover cutouts for this that I've printed. It's always two centimeters wide. That's how I always print my book covers. This is just one that I didn't use in my reading journal because I printed too many. So I just used it as a template for what size to, to do the rectangles because I wanted there to be plenty of space for a little star rating below each movie poster. And then my very simple decoration solution was to use the rose pet tape again and just glue them down behind the rectangles and then I could glue the rectangles like on top of them. My tip when working with pet tape is that a glue tape works a lot better than a glue stick when it comes to gluing stuff on top of pet tape. I mean it is plastic so it makes sense. <laughs> So I didn't use a glue stick for anything, I think, in the setup. I just used the glue tape and mine is from Tombow. I really like it. To change it up a little bit, I wrote the horror movie's title at the bottom of this right spread. I think that it looks nice that the spreads are so different, even though they have very similar components or like the end result of what I'm going to glue in is very similar, pretty much the same thing. And that is it for the spreads that I have set up for October so far. So now let's do a little flip through, look through all of the spreads one more time. I'm really happy with how they turned out. They are perfectly gothic, Lolita, a little bit spooky, but also very elegant. And that's exactly what I was going for. If you would like to check it out, I have a printable journaling kit over on my Patreon with lots of planner and decorative stickers with this theme that you can download and print out as many as you want at home. I make these journaling kits every month and it's a really great way to just have pretty much unlimited stickers for your journal because all of the older kits are available as well. So when you join, even just for one month, you still get access to like four years worth of, of printables, which is kind of crazy. So a big thank you to my patrons who have supported me this month and, you know, every month. I really appreciate it. They are the reason that I get to do this full time. So thank you so much. And thank you so much to you who watched this video all the way to the end. Be sure to put a black cat emoji in your comment to let me know that you watched the video all the way to the end. I hope that October will be wonderfully spooky for all of you. Let me know if you have any favorite Halloween or spooky month traditions in the comment section below. I would love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, all that's left to say is that I hope you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!